Hey, it's Nolan Thais from Mortgage360, and today we're discussing where is the best bank in Canada to get a mortgage. And what we're going to do is we're going to run through, we're going to compare all the banks, we're going to tell you the one little trick that every single one of them has, because they all have at least one, and at the end we're going to get to our very favorite bank and the one that we think is the best choice for most consumers in Canada to get their mortgage. But before we get into it, do me that favor, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please, for the YouTube algorithm so more people can see this video, please hit that like button. Okay, so let's talk about banks real quickly. They all do certain things well. I mean, if you want great commercial banking or you want wealth management, RBC is the place to go. If you want the best online trading platform for self-investing, then BMO is the place to go. And if you want a free iPod and a comfy couch and the best technology in the industry, then TD is your place to go. And if you're like me, and you have a parent who was a banker for 47 years of her life, you make sure that you go to whatever bank your mother doesn't work at so that she can't see where you're spending your money on the weekends. My wife and I personally, we have bank accounts spread over all the different banks. We have them at BMO, we have them at TD, we have them at RBC, and we have them at Scotiabank because all of those banks do different things well. And we pick and choose the products that we want from each based on what that individual bank does well. But how do we define the best bank for your mortgage? Well, it's really simple. We want to choose the bank that has the least overall costs over the life of your mortgage and the one with the most flexibility, right? You want the bank that's going to cost you the least amount of money. And there are some banks that will cost you more money, even if the interest rates are exactly the same. And that's what we're going to examine today is which bank is the one that makes the most sense for you. And you might be surprised that you don't want to pick your bank based on the lowest rate. And we'll talk about why when we get to the BMO portion of this conversation. But more than just cost, we need a criteria to figure out which one of the banks is going to be the best option. And here's how we suggest that we're going to do that. We're going to look at their prepayment privileges. Because what we find is the banks with the best prepayment privileges have the best overall mortgage. And the best prepayment privileges mean you can pay off the mortgage the fastest, which means that you pay the least amount of interest over time. And what we found is that the greater the greed factor, the worse the bank is for a mortgage. And the lower the greed factor, the better the bank is for a mortgage. And how we're gonna rank these is based on how quickly they will let you pay out your mortgage. And therefore, the faster a lender will let you pay out your mortgage, the lower the greed factor which makes for a better lender for a mortgage. So let's get into this. And what we're going to do is we're going to rank them from worst to best, finishing with the best place to get a mortgage in Canada, in our opinion. So let's start with RBC. There's a clear reason why we think RBC is the worst lender to get a mortgage out in Canada, and that's because their prepayment privileges are the worst. They're the only bank in Canada that will only allow you to pay 10% of your mortgage in lump sum payments every year without penalty. Everyone else has higher prepayment privileges. Now, here's the interesting part is RBC clients are the most loyal clients in the industry. For whatever reason, maybe it's the connotation of it being the Royal Bank of Canada, they don't want to leave and all they want to do is get their mortgage at RBC. Okay, now slightly better is BMO. BMO has great mortgages and they've got low featured mortgages and you have to know which one you're getting when you're getting a mortgage from this particular bank. They have what's called their smart mortgage, which is their no frills mortgage. We've talked a lot about no frills in other videos. We'll link them up here. They've also got their normal mortgage, which is for all intents and purposes, an awesome mortgage. It has 20% prepayment privileges and often comes with what's called a mortgage cash account, which means that if you pay your mortgage in advance and you need to get the money back out, you're allowed to do that. They're one of the few lenders in the industry that does this. It's an awesome feature that typically only comes with the BMO mortgage. But that being said, most people are rate driven and as a result they're choosing BMO smart mortgage and BMO smart mortgage is really only smart for BMO because it comes with a few things that aren't in the best interest of the consumer. One, it's got prepayment privileges similar to RBC's 10%. It's also got what's called a bona fide sale clause which is essentially a no refinance clause or no leave and go to a different lender clause and what that means is that you're stuck with BMO until such time as you sell the property or the end of the term comes up. So if you get offered a better rate elsewhere, if you want to refinance and you don't qualify at BMO and you want to go elsewhere too bad because you've got their smart mortgage, you're pretty much stuck with them. So that's their little trick and you've got to watch out for that when you're dealing with BMO. Now, moving on to CIBC. CIBC, depending on the product you get, has different prepayment privileges. It can be 10, 15, 20%, depending on what you get and what you've negotiated. Now, similar to BMO, the lowest prepayment privileges often come with the product that is the least flexible, the highest ones with the product that is the most flexible, but in order to get that higher prepayment privilege, you have to pay 
a higher rate in most cases. Now, you'll notice that when we get to CIBC, they have what's called a 100% increase your payment option. Now, this is an interesting option because what it means is that if you want to increase your payment by up to double the original payment amount, you can do that, which is really cool because let's say you're paying $1,000 a month and you decide, hey, now I can, I can afford to pay $1,500 a month. You can increase it by 50% to $1,500 or by if you wanted to, 100% to $2,000, and they will allow you to do this. Now, often they'll let you pull it back if you want to, but there are privileges similar to this that are better than increasing your payments by 100%, and we'll get to those when we start talking about Scotiabank. Okay, so CIBC's little trick is this, the cashback. They love the cashback, and here's why. So what they'll do is, upon closing, they will say, okay, we're gonna give you a $5,000 cashback, for example. And let's say in year three of your five-year term, you decide that you want out of your mortgage. You either want to leave to go to a different lender or you've sold the property. Well, CIBC is going to make you pay back that $5,000 in its entirety. In fact, if you pay off the mortgage a day before your term ends, they will still expect you to pay back the whole $5,000, even though you've paid them five years worth of interest on that mortgage. We've had this happen with clients where we request a payout statement a month early and CIBC comes back and says, okay, well, you owe us the mortgage plus the penalty plus this $5,000 we gave them. Now, if they were to pay out the mortgage on the renewal date, they wouldn't have to pay the $5,000 back. Now, most banks do cashbacks, but they will only make you pay back the amount that's relative to the amount of time you have left on the mortgage. So let's say you had a $5,000 cashback and you had two years left on the mortgage. They're only going to make you pay back $2,000, not the whole $5,000. But CIBC is a little bit different. They use this as a retention strategy. It works well because that $5,000 cashback is usually long gone by the time they come back asking for it because you want out of your mortgage. So, you know, cash is free only if you end up having your mortgage to the end of the term with CIBC. So let's move on to TD now. TD's got very similar prepayment privileges again to CIBC. They have the increase your payment by up to 100%. They have 15% lump sum prepayment privileges on all of their mortgages, so you can pay up to 15% per year without penalty. This is a great lender. They have a lot of great features. They have a lot of great products. Their new to Canada product is second to none. Uh, absolutely phenomenal lender. We love them to death. The one thing you have to watch out for, their little trick, is you have to watch out for their collateral charge. So what TD likes to do is they like to register their mortgage for up to 125% of the value of your property, which is way more than what you actually borrowed. They're the only lender in Canada that we know of that does this. And what that means is that if you ever wanna get a second mortgage or you ever wanna get a line of credit with a different bank, you can't do that. You're pretty much stuck with TD because, because they've said, hey, nobody else can lend against this property except for us. So something to watch out for with them. We don't love that about them, but that's not a super, super big issue, but it's just something that's different from the other lenders. So something to watch out for there. Um, again, TD, great technology, great online user interfaces, free iPods, free TVs. Like they are the lender that is most millennial friendly in my mind or bank that's most millennial friendly in my mind, but we don't think they're the absolute best bank to get a mortgage at in Canada. So. We've gone through four of the five major banks in Canada. Who's left? Who's the best bank to get a mortgage out in Canada? Well, it's Scotiabank. Here's why. So Scotiabank is by far the leading lender when it comes to paying your mortgage off quicker. In fact, they are the number one lender when it comes to being able to pay the least amount of interest over the term of your mortgage. Why? because their prepayment privileges are awesome. Their standard mortgage comes with a 15% prepayment privilege, which means you can make lump sum payments up to 15% per year. And if you negotiate with them, they'll increase this to 20%. They've also got the ability to increase your payment by 15% per year. Now, you may be thinking, well, TD and CIBC will allow you to increase it by 100%. Yes, well, let me get there. 15% is the amount that you can set your payment higher than it was in the year before but they've also got another feature, and that's called a double up payment. And what the double up payment allows you to do is double any payment you would like. So if throughout the course of the year, you wanna double up every single payment, you can do that and you've increased your payment by 100%. Plus you can use your 15% increase to increase it by basically 115%, which makes it the best increased payment option in the industry. 
The other thing that you can do is you can decide not to increase every single payment. You can decide you just want to double the payments that you want to. And what that means is that you can turn on the double up and you can turn it off and you can do this payment or next payment or the one three months from now, but you don't have to do them all. With the 100% increase your payment options that CIBC and TD Canada Trust have, once you've set your payment to that amount, you pretty much have to leave it there. You can't fluctuate up and down as you feel. Now, the other really great thing that we love about Scotiabank is let's say you use your double up payment option. Well, you can also choose to miss a payment down the road, which is absolutely awesome because let's say you get a little bit too aggressive paying down your mortgage and you've doubled up and doubled up and double up and you decide, hey, we want to take a break completely from our mortgage payments. You can do that with Scotiabank. We absolutely love it. Now, we did mention every single bank has a trick. What is Scotiabank's? Well, when they port a mortgage, they do something that's a little bit tricky. And what they do is they keep your original mortgage and if you borrow any new funds, they start a new second mortgage. So you end up with two mortgages on the new property that you're buying. And what that means is if you don't get the maturity dates to line up, you could end up with a mortgage that you know renews in 2021 and then the second portion renews in 2023. And because they renew at different times, you're always stuck with a penalty on one of the two mortgages. So the trick to Scotia's trick is to make sure that when you borrow new funds, you always get the new mortgage's maturity date to line up with the other mortgage. So if you've got two years left in your mortgage, you're porting, you're borrowing new money, the new money you want to get on a two-year mortgage instead of a five-year mortgage so that they both come up for renewal at the same time and you can ultimately end up having them merged into one mortgage so you can avoid being forced into a penalty if you decide to make a change down the road. So at the end of the day, in our minds, the choice is clear. When it comes to getting a mortgage at a bank, Scotiabank is the clear winner. There is nobody better. Now, are there other lenders that have better products, better features? Maybe. We'll discuss that in our next video. But for the most part, if you're going to get a mortgage from a bank and you insist on getting it from a bank, not necessarily a lender that specializes in just mortgages, which has a lot of merit to it, by the way. But if you insist on getting your mortgage from a bank, Scotiabank is by far the place to get your mortgage. TD is a close second. Everyone else, you know what? They're all good lenders. They're all good banks. They all have great th things that they do really, really well. But none of them compare to Scotiabank when it comes to getting a mortgage. So if you found this information useful, if you liked what you saw, please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And most importantly, if you're subscribed, you're going to get to see that next video where we talk about non-bank lenders and perhaps we have a competitor to Scotiabank when it comes to the best place in Canada to get a mortgage. Cheers.